Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Monday, the 24th day of July, 2023, Monday of the 16th week of the year, the 16th week in ordinary time. We are almost to the halfway point of our liturgical year. Um, and so, yes the number well actually we're past the halfway point but in the in the uh, weeks that are left since we began um, uh, the summer and fall ordinary time um, there's 32 30, no there's 34 weeks in the year and so we're at 16 so we're, we're almost we're almost we're almost halfway to the end of the year like we can say halfway to the end of the year uh, so coming to you this morning from the Marianne Cope playground of our uh, preschool the St. Francis preschool uh, right over here uh, empty and quiet because again it is the summertime um, and so no Nobody's here using it yet, but it still sits here, and um, you, you can come and play in it. Um, but uh, but it's usually much more active uh, during during the rest of the year. Uh, so on this. Um uh, Monday of the 16th week of the year, the 16th week in ordinary time. Uh, Exodus leaves us with a cliffhanger. Uh, why? Because, uh, again, the Israelites have been granted um, release, release from their servitude, and they can leave Egypt after, the, again, the 10th and the final plague, the death of the firstborn. Uh, but then the Egyptians wake up, or Pharaoh wakes up and says, what are we doing? We shouldn't get rid of our servants, our slaves, uh, the, the Hebrews, and so now we have to want, we want them back. And and again, this gets it gets all very um, complicated in so many ways because uh, God hardens Pharaoh's heart to want to do this and to pursue it. So again, it is a matter of choice, but it's also kind of a matter almost of divine manipulation. It's, it's so it's 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 a very careful story that one has to take a look at um, through a variety of levels because is God using Pharaoh um, to basically make another larger point as God will in, in, in a couple of verses um, or should Pharaoh just basically or, or, or was God done with the death of the firstborn and Pharaoh basically saying get out of here Israelites we do not need you anymore because you are dangerous people um, and so the pursuit begins it's all of Pharaoh's chariots and charioteers his army his forces or whatever it is and they pursue the Israelites, and again, we skip over a whole bunch of verses, uh, pursue, the, pursue the Israelites to the um, shore of the Red Sea, uh, or the Sea of Reeds. Sometimes it changes in translations. Um, but they are encamped there, and the Egyptian force is coming to claim them back as, as, as servants, as slaves in Egypt. Um, and they cry out to Moses, you know, again, have you, have you let us out in the desert to die? It was better to stay in Egypt. Why did you do this? Again, lots of complaining will happen throughout the entire Exodus. Um, but Moses says, wait, and you will see God God in activity and, and God in power and wonder and might and and basically God says you know uh, get, get ready to split the sea uh, basically and you will see glory happen uh, to through, through me through Pharaoh Pharaoh's chariots and charioteers um, what God will do we all know but that is but this leaves us with a cliffhanger to see that tomorrow what God will what God will do to the Egyptians and the, and, and, and their pursuit of the Israelites again this whole question of the wonder and the glory of God um, a band of um, basically no account servants and slaves um, are freed from their servitude are freed from their slavery by uh, a God who recognizes in them something wonderful and miraculous and needs and needs to have them a part of this God's life and so these things happen uh, but it is also a God who is not easily understood or easily explained away because the fair the hardening of Pharaoh's heart you now in pursuit of the Israelites um, is something that again uh, presents us with a God who needs to be respected who needs to be obeyed who needs who needs basically uh, to be kept um, in the understanding of being a God of gods in the uh, gospel today, um, in Matthew's gospel, the Pharisees look for a sign. They want Jesus to perform signs. And again, he's performing signs throughout this entire part of Matthew's gospel, but they don't want to believe it. And so basically he says the, the, that two signs uh, are, have been given already, and those are, should be signs enough, is a sign of Jonah having been swallowed by the whale and his... Um, proclamation to the city of Nineveh, and then it is the Queen of Sheba who comes to Solomon to seek his wisdom. Um, now, again, Jesus says something that doesn't necessarily pass in the same way, that just as Jonah is in the belly of the whale for three days, so the Son of Man will be in the earth for three days. Well, he ain't. He's in there for a couple of hours. <laughs> so, and so, so, so that has to be, again, it's another kind of uh, try to understand what, what, what is being said. But um, signs are abounding everywhere for the Pharisees and the scribes, and yet they refuse to see them because Jesus is presenting a God that they don't want to see because it is not a God that has made them powerful. Their idea of God has made them powerful, and it is just an idea of God. It is not the truth of God. And because they refuse to see that, because they refuse to be attentive to that, no amount of 
the signs. No amount of miracles, no amount of the supernatural will ever convince them. And so Jesus basically says, again, others have looked and searched and they have found it and they will be the ones who judge you because it's right here in your midst. You don't have to search for it at all and yet you refuse to see it. Let, let, let that never be said of us, again, who want to see God's signs, you know, in ways that we want to see them, and yet they are appearing to us in the ways that God knows we need to see them. Let us never mistake the signs of God's wonder, you know, for something that they are not, and let those signs of God's wonder continue to enrich our lives and bring us to truth and peace. A blessed day, St. Francis and people of God. May the Lord give you his peace.